live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Another day, another shortage in the blood supply for San Antonio. Should more donor restrictions be lifted? We're going to hear from the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center coming up. And a man accused of murder here in San Antonio now linked to a missing persons case across state lines. That story in a moment. But first, the world on edge tonight as people wonder what the Omicron COVID strain will bring. President Joe Biden says we should not be concerned, says we should be concerned, but not be panicked. Yeah, so now doctors in our area are weighing in. The Omicron variant was first discovered in Botswana, quickly spreading in South Africa. About 200 cases now confirmed in at least 17 countries, including two cases in Canada. So far, no cases of the new variant are in the United States. With things changing so quickly, local Local doctors tell the night team's Lee Waldman, we need to wait to learn more. As we live in the COVID era, the virus we've grown accustomed to is adapting, changing. This virus is basically evolving to try and infect more people. The latest strain, Omicron, is being labeled as a variant of concern by the WHO and CDC. Metro Health saying in a statement, it will take two to four weeks to begin to know how serious a threat this is. Early reports indicate the symptoms have been mild, unquote. Dr. Jason Bowling with University Health System says the severity of this variant is a big question mark. There are conflicting reports. One from a provider that said she only saw mild cases, a couple of mild cases, no one admitted to the hospital. I saw another report that said there were some moderate to severe cases. Looking at preliminary data from South Africa, the Omicron variant is very transmissible. The number of cases in South Africa really increased pretty rapidly. Epidemiologist Sharice Rohr Allegrini says when looking at the transmission rate, the vaccination rate of South Africa compared to San Antonio also needs to be a part of this conversation. South Africa has also a very low vaccination rate where you're more likely to see a new variant occur because you don't have the vaccination to slow transmission. For Dr. Bowling, the area of concern with Omicron is in the spike protein of the virus, the most studied area. He made the analogy, the spike protein is a key. Treatments like monoclonal antibodies and vaccines are blocking that key from entering the lock, which is our cells. If it gets into the cell, that's what starts the infection process. Basically, it's changing its key so it can work around our treatments and still infect cells. So things that we've been using to try and block it from entering the door, so to speak, it's trying to work its way around by creating a new key both experts say vaccinations are still our greatest defense against the Omicron variant. While the efficacy could potentially be lower, it still offers protection. Local pharmacies and Metro Health continue to offer COVID vaccines and booster shots. Reporting live, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. I want to get to some breaking news just into the KSAT 12 newsroom. The Bear County Sheriff's Office confirming a detention cadet died during a training exercise. They say the 59 year old cadet had a medical episode was pronounced dead at 539 this afternoon. The sheriff's office says that cadet had trouble breathing, was allowed to rest, but his condition began to worsen. He was taken to the hospital, but did not survive. The name of the cadet has not been released. We'll continue to follow this story as more details become available. Now, police in Texas and Oklahoma are looking for a homicide suspect in San Antonio who may be linked to a missing woman from Oklahoma. So we first told you about Francisco Javier Velasquez back in 2018. Police accused him of shooting and killing a man at a restaurant on the southwest side. He was supposed to be in court in August, but it's unclear what happened that day or if he even showed up. Now he's in trouble for a separate case. Investigators in Oklahoma say that he dated Talon Cheyenne Trito Padilla, who is now missing. She left work 24 days ago in Wayne, Oklahoma, and no one's seen her since. Investigators in Oklahoma say that Velasquez also goes by the name Mike Paco Mendoza. They say that he's armed and dangerous, and if you know where he is, call 911. Emotions running high. They lost both of their parents. First, their father murdered their mother, Josephine Ramos. Now their father, Brian Ramos, set to serve 35 years in prison in that murder case. Today, two of his children faced him in court to share their words. I am mad up for my brother and sister, but I can look at you eye to eye and not look away. And you can rot in jail and people can hurt you. And you're going to finally know what that feels like. 
how you always used to tell me that actions have consequences. Well, now here you go. You can rot in jail, one daughter said. Ramos shot and killed his wife in a parking lot off of Goliad Road April 1st, 2019, a day before the couple's divorce was set to be finalized. He's been in the Bear County Jail ever since. Ramos will be eligible for parole in about 15 years. Now, new tonight, we are looking at gated apartment homes near the Pearl. Last week, there was a shooting at one, and then days after that, someone stole a $900 bicycle right from someone's front door. But that's not all, because police are also showing up to other properties in that area. The night team's Patty Santos has more. Do you think with like a gated parking garage that where there's a lot of vehicles and cars that things would be safe there? So to come in and just the U-lock shattered on the ground and then just see one bike there and my bike missing just felt like kind of surreal to happen so close to where we live. Jeff and Samantha, who wanted to remain anonymous for fear of retribution, say they had higher expectations when they moved into their luxury apartment near the Pearl this fall. One day we got an email out of the blue saying, don't leave your apartment, stay where you are. What they call vague alerts from the complex when there's trouble doesn't bring them ease. All these incidents keep happening, so it's a little bit worrisome. San Antonio police records show there have been nearly 50 calls for service to 1800 Broadway in the last four months. Some of those calls include burglaries, assault in progress, and just last week, a shooting. We checked calls for other apartments nearby. Across the street at the Mosaic on Broadway, there were 32 calls. Many were disturbances and some vehicle burglaries. Down the street at 1221 Broadway Lofts, there were 34 calls. Some of those calls listed as vehicle burglaries and several were 911 hang up calls. Police say there were no calls from South Lane Apartments within the last four months. These tenants at 1800 Broadway hope management does something to address their concerns. More communication about what's been happening and what their plans are. And we did call the offices of those apartments that we mentioned there. We also emailed management and we have not yet heard back. Live, Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Patty. He tried to get his job back, but it's not going to happen. A Bear County jailer off the job for good. All this after he allegedly kicked an inmate in the face. The accusation stemmed back to December of 2018. Records show Corporal Jack Hernandez responded to a disruptive inmate in a day room. Now, the administrators say Hernandez kicked the inmate, describing the use of force as, quote, not reasonable or in accordance with Texas and federal laws and rules, end quote. The sheriff's office fired Hernandez on June 7th. He filed an appeal. But that firing, as we said, was upheld. The sparks flew in this one. Firefighters facing more than flames as dangers. Check out the sparks from a live power line they had to deal with this morning. It's all happening. Uh, at an abandoned home on Calabria near Hamilton Avenue, crews managed to keep the fire from spreading. Nearly an hour later, firefighters say someone from CPS Energy made it to the scene to try and help with these live power lines. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Lots of questions tonight about the future of student journalism at the Alamo Colleges District. That student-run newspaper known as The Ranger will continue online, and that's a huge deal because it's been printed for 95 years. So tomorrow, school officials and students will discuss what happens next. They're going to discuss how student journalists are going to reach their audience, and they also have to figure out whether all five campuses within that district are going to see a change. The Ranger's current managing editor says that the focus should remain at San Antonio college you're able to be in an actual lab in a writing lab you're able to sit in a dark room learn how to edit photos compared to if you're out of palo alto you're just learning how to write yeah so tomorrow's event is invite only but the animal college's district plans to hold other meetings to discuss the future of their communications program now coming up, the Festival of Lights stretching to San Antonio and the menorah now shining for a second light. We're going to tell you where you can participate in a Hanukkah celebration coming up. We're also going to talk about my beard bros. The donations <laughs> continue to roll in to beat cancer. We have an update on the totals for No Shave November and the latest look at just how scruffy our KSAT team has become after the break. Steve won the contest. All right, plus with so many shortages in the blood supply, is it time to loosen restrictions for donors? We're going to take that very question to the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, and that's next 
on the Night Beat. It's a situation that our community just can't seem to get out of a blood shortage. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center only has about two and a half days worth of blood. The night team's Lee Waldman asks if it's time to ease donor restrictions and open up the donor pool. The risk of not having blood uh, versus, you know, um, uh, the changing criteria just to ease those those criteria so people can give more. I think we're we're at that point where we need to lift further some of those requirements and allow more donors to give. The start of the pandemic brought with it a drastic decline in the number of blood donors. There is a, uh, a blood shortage around the world of epic proportions. Adrian Mendoza, the vice president of blood operations for South Texas Blood and Tissue Center, says a blood shortage of this nature is frightening. We haven't seen anything like this in more than 25 years. Now there's an added pain. The demand for blood from hospitals has surged because of things like surgeries, car crashes for those going through chemotherapy. And unfortunately, without the donations of blood to support those patients, we just can't serve everybody. It's a classic supply and demand problem. Currently, the supply chain blood donors have a list of requirements and restrictions set by the FDA. Donors of whole blood must be 16 or older, weigh at least 110 pounds, and be in good health and feeling well. It seems simple, straightforward, until you look at the restrictions put into place to make sure the blood is safe. A lot of the rules, however, um, have stayed in place for a long time, and unfortunately, testing has improved. In April of 2020, the FDA eased some of the restrictions to prevent a critical blood shortage. Men who've had sexual relationships with other men can now donate after three months instead of 12. The same goes for people with tattoos or piercings. Anyone who was in the UK from 1980 through 1996 for three months or more was permanently excluded from donating blood because of possible exposure to mad cow disease. Now that restriction no longer exists. But the safety of blood has improved over time and it's allowed the FDA to reconsider a lot of those rules. She believes because of the reliability of modern testing, that should allow additional sexual behavior and travel restrictions to be eased for donors. But is it enough? They made those decisions to change those rules and they came, became effective earlier this year or last year. Um, but again, we, we still see a declining number of donors coming through. Mendoza says they cannot maintain this pattern of blood shortage much longer. Other blood centers are asking hospitals to stop with voluntary surgeries to help with blood supply. We aren't there yet, but Mendoza says if things get worse, that's a possible next step. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. A blood donation site is on the move. It stopped at the Enchanted Springs Ranch community in Bernie this morning. It's going to be back there tomorrow from 10 to 3. Donors are going to be eligible for a free ticket to a Christmas light festival and a free two topping pizza. You can also schedule a blood donation here in San Antonio. Just visit SouthTexasBlood.org. We have a link to that and information on tomorrow's blood drive in Bernie on our website, KSAT.com. All right, you've seen the beards. Let's talk about the bucks. The number of no shave November donations to team KSAT just keeps rising at noon today. The KSAT team managed to raise about $16,000 viewers like you now help push that number to more than 17,000, $17,320 well past our goal of $10,000. And it's all thanks to your generous donations. Our team promised not to shave for the entire month in an effort to raise awareness and raise money in the fight against cancer. My donations go to colorectal cancer. Take a look at where our beards stand right now. There's still time to donate. Just head to ksat.com slash no shave to learn more and tune in to GMSA at nine tomorrow morning. Some of the guys, myself included, uh -huh. will be getting our beards shaved off live on the air. And many women will be very happy. <laughs> to see when yours comes off. No, some people <laughs> like it, but yeah. I, you know I, what? I like it, but you know, I, facial hair, you know. Once subjective. a month. Yeah. It's a once a month thing for a good cause.
Now to all our Jewish friends, happy Hanukkah. It's the second night and the Festival of Lights is going pretty strong. Here's a look at Shavano Park. The holiday celebrates the recovery of Jerusalem and also celebrates a miracle where what was supposed to light a menorah for one day instead lasted for eight. And that's exactly why Hanukkah lasts for eight days. Just some trivia for you. And it's a sort of a celebration and it's a celebration of freedom. And what better place to have the celebration than in America? Now, tradition also includes eating certain foods like donuts and playing the dreidel. Tomorrow, the Jewish Federation of San Antonio's PJ Library is going to host a um, menorah lighting and a concert. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a live look outside now. Live cam. Yes. Over the tree. I believe that's the Travis Park tree. Yes. Am I correct? I'm Where you can I'm now go ice skating. That's what I was looking for. I was yeah. looking for, okay, where's the ice skating rink? I know it's nearby. That'll tell me for sure it's Travis Park, but beautiful out there tonight. Going to be some soft ice as well with the sunshine and temperatures warming up a bit when you have sun and warmer temperatures. I come from the Northland when I was a kid where <laughs> you have hard ice and soft ice. Yeah. You guys are looking at me it. like I'm crazy. Yeah. No, I, I, I was more like, really, sun melts ice. <laughs> well, no, but you get, you know, you, they've got the chillers, Steve. Oh, and oh, the chillers okay. do right. their job. But when it warms up or you get some of that sun, you get, the ice softens up a bit. Makes it very different to skate on. Okay. Opposed to the good, hard, solid ice that's like concrete when it's really cold. You hear that, kids? Got it. We don't have to worry about that right now, though. Another cool night, but not as cold as last night. Humidity is going to be back, and we do have some small rain chances to talk about in the days ahead. Take a look at our beautiful sunset this evening. Of course, this time of year, the sun sets earlier and earlier. Right now, it's at 535 p.m., the official sunset in San Antonio. We started the day at 40, so that's a good six degrees below average. And even right at the freezing point, Fredericksburg and Kerrville, other parts of the Hill Country hit freezing today. Then we topped out at 70 degrees, a nice afternoon. So tomorrow's going to be similar. You'll want a light jacket in the morning, but by the afternoon, short sleeves, and it's going to be comfortable. Uh, temperatures right now mostly in the 50s across the entire Lone Star State. 51 El Paso, 56 Dallas, 57 Brownsville. 52 Amarillo, 54 now in San Antonio, and already some mid 40s in parts of the Hill Country, but Catula and Del Rio hanging on to 60 degrees. This is what we're expecting tomorrow morning. Most of us in the low to mid 40s for temperatures to start the day. Gonzales 41, Hondo 43, Canyon Lake about 43. Bernie about 41, so you'll notice the chill in the air tomorrow morning, but morning temperatures will be on the rise. A little influx of humidity is going to boost those morning temperatures back into the 50s by Wednesday and then low 60s Friday into the upcoming weekend. We talked about humidity. Dew points now only in the 40s, so a lack of mugginess in the air, but those dew points rise up, and you're going to feel the stickiness later this week, especially by Thursday and particularly into Friday downright muggy and sticky outside. Just some of those mid and high clouds coming in off the Pacific and they're being pushed our way from this upper level disturbance over the northern Baja Peninsula. That's kind of the wild card in our rain chances in the days ahead. This will th throw a little bit of Pacific moisture aloft toward us in the days ahead and some energy as well, but not a whole lot. So tomorrow, no rain chances. We'll actually have a lot of sunshine fog developing though tomorrow evening lasting through the Wednesday morning commute highs remaining in the 70s all the way through the weekend. No big high temperature fluctuations. So afternoons will be similar. You'll just notice the mugginess later in the week and just 20% chances of a few storms Friday through the weekend. That's a soft ice forecast right there. Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> From your wisdom. Either way, a lot of people have to be in a good mood tonight <laughs> yes. because let's go Spurs. When we say that now, we mean it. The first win streak of the season, two games in a row. First time that's happened all this year. Now the question is, can they keep it going? Yeah. Headed out west for our West Coast road trip. When we come back, we'll show you how they were able to whip Washington tonight after beating up on Boston on Friday and the Cowboys head coach testing positive for COVID. Coming up. San Antonio Spurs trying to start their first winning streak of the season this evening at home against the Wizards. San Antonio's defense helps ignite the offense in the first quarter. Derek White comes up with a steal, gets it ahead of DeJounte Murray, back to Keldon Johnson for the one-handed jam. Spurs lead 9-6. Then on the very next play, Jakob Pertl deflects that shot to Johnson to start the break. Keldon finds Keita 
Bates Diop and gets in back for another Tomahawk slam. Spurs still tied at 20 at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, Derek White keeps the Spurs in it with a pull-up jumper, but San Antonio still trails 51-45 at halftime. White heats up in the third quarter. He drains the three to give the Spurs the lead 69-66. DeJounte Murray drives into the lane, gets a floater to fall. San Antonio up by five. White strikes again, this time stopping under the basket, drawing the foul from former Spur Davis Bertans and banking it in the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Spurs score 39 points points in the third quarter lead 84 70 heading into the fourth there would be no letdown tonight Bren Forbes his three puts the Spurs up by 10 he had 10 points off the bench white finish of the team by 24 points Murray had 22 and 10 rebounds the Spurs have finally won two games in a row 116 99 is the final I mean we were getting stops so we're really getting on transition pushing it um finding open guys I mean I think we did a good job of finding Bren a couple of times and um KJ pushed it and attacked what he does. So, I mean, um, it all started with getting stops and then getting on transition and then in the half court just finding open guys and, and knocking down and making the right play. There you go. Three-game West Coast road trip starts on Thursday at 9 o'clock in Portland. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy is out for Thursday night's game against the Saints in New Orleans after he tested positive today. McCarthy now joins assistant coaches Joe Philbin, Jeff Blasco, Scott Tolzian, and strength and conditioning coach Harold Nash as out for the Saints game. But the only player out so far is offensive tackle Terrence Steele out of Steele High School. Before his positive COVID test was known, McCarthy made an appearance on a Dallas radio station where he admitted he has moved into a hotel during the latest COVID outbreak. You know, I think our, our players are actually have done an extra job, excellent job going to, you know, taking the extra step. I mean, personally, I've, I've moved in a hotel the last couple of days, so we're, I mean, our, our climate here is, you know, we're, we're doing the, the things necessary uh, to give us the best chance each and every week. And, and I'm confident, I have strong belief, as long as we continue to do that, that uh, we'll get to where we want to go. All right, not everyone was in the Thanksgiving mood last Thursday at the Cowboys-Raiders game. This dust-up occurred between Cowboys defensive back Calvin Joseph and the Raiders defensive back Roderick Teamer that resulted in a sideline melee that field judge Tom Hill got caught up in and received a cut under his chin. Both players rejected, and after the game, Cowboys defensive tackle Tristan Hill punched Raiders offensive lineman John Simpson and today was suspended for two games without pay. He'll miss games against the Saints and the Washington football team. Can the UTSA Roadrunners recover from their first loss of the season to win the conference USA Championship next. The UTSA Roadrunners are preparing for their biggest football game of the year when they host Western Kentucky for the Conference USA Championship this Friday night in the Alamo Dome. The Roadrunners are coming off their worst performance and their only loss of the season when they were blown out by North Texas in Denton on Saturday, 45-23. Now they face Western Kentucky, the same team they beat in Week 6 on the road, 52-46. Can the timing of the loss provide an extra chip on the team's shoulder against the Hilltoppers? I've seen it where it's cost you two games in a row, and I've seen it where you fight back and you play better. It's just a matter of our mindset. It really is. It's a great question. Is North Texas going to beat us twice? I'll let you know Friday at 10. Is this going to be what makes us win a conference championship? I'll let you know Friday at 10. I, I, I don't know if I knew. You know, obviously nobody else thinks so because we started out a favorite and we're already an underdog, so America believes we're done. Well, to his point, they were two-point favorites going into the game, but now they've dropped off to one-and-a-half-point underdogs Friday at 6 o'clock. The Brennan Bears are headed to the State High School quarterfinals in football after they were able to remain undefeated and number one in 12 stock 12 after outscoring Austin Bowie 59-36 to advance to the 6A Region 4 Division 1 championship game against Lake Travis, putting their 13-0 record on the line against the Cavaliers 11-2 record Saturday at 2 in Dripping Springs. It's very exciting, you know. Uh, we came a long way throughout the whole year. We just kept getting better, kept, you know, executing each week, and it's very exciting to go against Lake Travis. They're a great team, you know. They have a, a legacy of greatness there, you know. They had a couple cha state championships. I know uh, Baker Mayfield came from there, so it's just kind of, you know, we got to match their intensity, you know, and we got to prove to them that, you know, we're not someone to overlook. And get this, you'll be able to actually see that game live right here in San Antonio on KSAT 12.2, Saturday at 2, live from Dripping Springs. Go Bears. Go Bears. Yeah. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Would you just take a moment and say goodbye to that? Yeah. It's going to be gone tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, GMSA at 9 a.m. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. <laughs>